Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we're responding to 504 Roan's request for a video covering debugging in Unity with MonoDevelop. Now a few things I wanted to point out first is that I'm on a Mac, um, so some of this may look a little bit different for some of you on Windows machines, but for the most part a lot of this will be the same. Okay guys, so the first thing I did was I created a really basic project that just moves a cube forward every frame. So let's take a look at the project really quickly. As you can see, again, just really simple, right? All the cube is doing is moving forward in a straight line. Okay, so now that we've seen the project, I'm going to go ahead and go over to Mono Develop. Okay, so this is our basic script in Mono Develop. And as you can see, I've just got a public float variable with, uh, with a speed that's set to 10, and I've just got the transform.position increasing by the transform.forward times the speed times time.delta time. So essentially we're just going to continuously move forward. Okay, so let's get into how to use the debugger. The debugger is pretty useful in Mono Develop. I prefer the Visual Studio deb um, debugger. Um, and I heard someone worked one into Sublime Text. So you guys may want to check those out as well, but Today we're just talking about mono develop, so let's get into that. As you have probably noticed, my mono develop may look a little bit different from yours because I've already got a few windows pulled in that you need for debugging in mono develop. So we're going to go ahead and talk about these windows. And to access these windows, all you have to do is go to View, and then click on Debug Windows, and click on Locals. And when you click on this, these windows will pop up on the bottom. And these windows will output what is occurring during the debugging. So this really allows you to see what's going on while you're debugging. You'll see this when I start um, the debugging process. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is run the, de the debugging process, right? And there is a play button up here that you can click. It's not as reliable as going in as using this other method I'm about to show you. But you can use this. Usually when you click on this, it's going to try to reopen the project. But I already have the project open, so that's obviously going to cause a conflict. And that can be really annoying if you're having to go back and forth each time, you know, to close the project, then go back and press the play button. So that's pretty annoying. So the better way to really do that is to click on Run. And then you're going to want to click on this Attach to Process. And we're going to attach it to the Unity process that we see in this list. So as soon as this pops up, we're going to click on Unity Editor, Editor, and you can just double click on that. And as soon as you start that, you can see that the debugging is already running. Okay, so we have a pause button here, which means that the debugging is already taking place. Okay, another thing I wanted to point out really quickly is just the application output. And so this is just sort of everything that's being pulled in and being used by the application. So you see loaded assembly. Um, and it's loading, loading in all of my files so that this can actually occur. So what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to go ahead and take out that window and I'm going to go over to the project, press play. Okay, so we see this running here and we see this is not doing anything, right? Well, why is it not doing anything? Well, we forgot to add a breakpoint, right? So the breakpoint is a really vital to debugging because that is essentially what we want to take a look at while we're debugging. And the only thing this script is doing is moving the transform.position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my breakpoint right here by just clicking in this small left sidebar here. So if I just click here, it will add the breakpoint. Okay, and now that we're at that breakpoint, you'll notice that the pause button has turned into a play button. And that is because we reached a new frame. And since this is changing every frame, essentially what's going to happen is this is going to step frame by frame. Every time I press the play button, it's going to step frame by frame. Okay, so if I go back to the game really quickly, we can see that it's totally paused now, right? So if I press the play button, it went through another iteration, and I, I don't, you guys can't really tell that it moved, but it did move, so I'll go back and press the play button again. Okay, and it is moving forward just a tiny bit here. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is the locals window down here. And this is really useful because you can really see sort of what is occurring 
each step. So if I click on this little drop down arrow here, we can see two things, base and speed. And the base is going to be this mono behavior that we're talking about here. So if I click on that and drop it down again, we're getting two more things, right? Use GUI layout, that's always gonna be there, and then base again, which is the unity behavior. So if I click on this, Again, we're getting more things you know, from enabled. So is the object enabled in the project? And it's true. Is active and enabled? Again, true. Um, but we really, we're really concerned with this, right? We're really concerned with what's happening to this base. So we're gonna keep going down and looking at this. So a lot of these are saying not supported exception. And that's because we're not using these elements for this script. We're essentially only moving the transform.position. So what we want to do now is we want to look at this game object. Okay, and now that we're in game object, we want to see if we can find the transform. Okay, so now we're here, we're looking at the transform. So I, I, essentially what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to see what is happening to the transform each frame. So if I click this drop down again, we're looking at all of the components of this transform. So we've got a child count, we've got the Euler angles, we've got the transform.forward, has changed, you know, all of these different components that we're looking at. And so what, what's gonna happen is when I press play again, the position should change, right? Oh, well, I didn't pin it, so. That's another important thing, is make sure that you can pin these things so that way you can, so that way you don't have to click on this every single time. That can get annoying. Okay, so now we're back in here, and this has changed because it was at like negative 219, right? So we are getting some change here. Another thing you can do with a debugger is you can hover up here and it comes up with this window, right? And so this window allows you to do essentially exactly what we were just looking at in the locals, but in a nice little pop-up window, okay? And so what you can do with this, sorry about that, what you can do with this is you can pin this to the code, and that gives us a little window that we can just drag around, you know, and place wherever we want it. So I'm gonna move it over here, and I'm gonna do the drop down, and now we can see the transform each frame. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. So it went over to the game because it is still running. If you're running a dual monitor setup, that won't happen. You know, the, the changing between windows really quickly won't occur. Um, but I'm on a single monitor right now so that I can show you guys all the code and everything really, you know, really well. Um, okay, and we can really pin as many things as we want to here. So if I, right now I'm looking at the transform.position and I've got that pinned, or just the transform, not really the posi position. So let's say I wanted to look at the speed here. I can just hover over it and pin that. Okay, so if you're, if you're doing some sort of speed manipulation, you know, um, I've seen like a plane game, if you're going up, if the plane is going up, then speed should decrease decrease because you're going against gravity. So this may be useful for something like that, you know, to where you want to see, well, what's really happening to the speed here? And you can do that in the Unity Inspector as well, which is usually how I do rapid prototyping. I just would do that in the Unity um, Inspector. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is how to stop debugging. And to stop debugging, you can just click on the stop button here. And that's going to stop it here and then you can pre you can stop it in the game as well, so that way it doesn't just continue to run. Okay guys, you may have also noticed that um, we also have a breakpoints window down here, and this is just showing us where our current breakpoint exists on this script. So we've got it at line 10, so at line 10 we have a breakpoint, and if you just look here it says new script.cs line 10. So, you know, that's just correlating directly to our breakpoint. Okay, you can also go into the watch and you can add specific variables into watch. So if you want to watch a particular variable, you can do that. Um, again, if you're trying to do stuff like that, like watch how a variable is changing, you may do better off just to do that in the Unity Inspector. Um, I mean, unless you just always want your game to be in full screen or something like that. Um, but the Unity Inspector is really great for watching variable changes. Um, you know, you can do conditionals and things like that 
in the mono develop debugger. Um, we're not going to go into that today because that's a little bit complex and can get a little confusing at times. So right now that's just a really basic example. So you can also use the debugger to look at conditionals and see how those are being evaluated and other things like that. We're not going to get into that in this uh, tutorial. If you guys do want to get into that, definitely let us know and we can do a video on that as well. Okay, so we're just going to go back in one, one more time so I can show you that process one more time and this and I can show you what the other buttons do in the debugger. So I'm going to go again to run, attach the process, double click on the Unity. And again, you can see it's immediately going to the previous state. So we've got our pins back. Um, the game's not evaluating yet because I haven't pressed play. So if I press play it will immediately take me back because again we have a breakpoint every frame and that's not really great for debugging right you know it doesn't make a ton of sense to do a debug every frame that can get quite annoying unless you know you really want to see what's going on every single frame um, but I'm just gonna toggle that guy open again um, okay so these I already talked about what this play button does right so that just takes us to um, the next frame. So continue execution, right? So all we're doing here is increasing the position. So if I press this, the position changes. Excellent, right? So the next thing we can do is step over. So when you step over, that's just going to take you the next line down for most instances. So you can see we were on this on line 10. I click step over. Now we're on line 11. I click step over again. And that's essentially ending the script, which winds us back up at line 10. Okay. You can also step into. We don't have anything to step into here. So if I click it, it'll just take us back to line 10. That's useful for like if statements, um, for loops, things like that. Then you can definitely see, you know, stepping into it, seeing what it's actually doing while it's evaluating. And you can step out. So if you step out, with this script again, it's just going to go back to line 10. The last button just allows you to detach the process being debugged. So if we were to attach this and go back over, again, the game's just running, but we're not tracking anything. Okay. So I think that's going to do it for a really basic introduction to debugging and mono develop. Again, guys, if you don't think we covered enough in this video, definitely let us know and we will take a more in-depth look at the debugging process in mono develop, you know, for example, um, you know, stepping into if statements and out of statements and things like that. We can definitely take a look at that as well. I know with Unity, you know, one of the things that I like to use this for, and I know there's another tutorial out there that currently does this, um, but for Raycast, right? So you never really know what a raycast is doing and you may not want to debug that um, you, you can draw a line and you know while you're testing the game you know you can use you can use the debugger for raycast to see where the ray is going if it's hitting anything um, things like that so it, it is really a useful tool I'm not saying don't use it I'm just saying some of the other IDEs have a better debugger um, but again if you don't have those IDEs you know use what use what you have right so I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, drop a like, be sure to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching, guys.